the bottom, they throw it down, I rebuild it. I give myself a task, you can bet your ass I fulfill it. Yeah, man, I'm talking about Willis. All right, it's recording. Willis. Is it recording? Give me a sound bite. What are we doing? Episode 62, right? Why are you laughing? What What do you mean? 61? No, it has to be. Can't be 60. We did 60 last week. I'm sure we did 60. What, what episode is this? Pulling the Red Podcast, episode 60. What's going on, guys? We will jump right into this. What's going on? Another day in paradise. What's going on with you? Where you been? I've been in Texas. Eagle Lake, Texas. Eagle Lake, Texas. Yes, doing a, uh, a Tavor class. Teaching? No, no, no. Uh-oh. Chris Hayes says that you don't need to take any classes. Chris, what does Chris know? He drives a tractor with a snowblower on it. He don't know. Of course I need to take classes. You think that's how he introduces himself? Sni- what, sniper his... extraordinaire? Or you think he's like, I'm tractor guy? I'm tractor guy? Because that's his... Uh, Instagram, it's all tractor stuff. His MOS is tractor guy. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a great class. Little Spoon should have been there, but it was a good class. Had a great time. Ron, he's a, a reserve IDF special forces guy. Doesn't he have some special forces shit to be doing right now? Uh, fortunately for us, he just came back. So, so did you do a lot of parkour and shit while you guys are there? Well, he has a... He has a, a school on his own that's called Technical Fitness, and I do believe that there's some parkour and some, uh, man, they talked about it. Ninjutsu. Uh, is it Israel, Krav, his redoute or something? The Krav Maga or whatever. Krav Maga. The, whatever the Israelis do. So I am sure that those courses are a little more a little more physical than the IWI course. This one was more physical than the first one, but again, not like It's like CrossFit, CrossFit yeah, no, but with punching. No, none of that stuff. None of that stuff. But just more, you know. Single point sling or two get, point sling? Oh, I'm using a two point. Single point is lame. Single point looks cooler. It does look cooler. But if you're not carrying an MP5. Would you go back to a three point sling? Would I go back to a three? I don't even. The, the, I still get dudes that show up every now and then. They're like, do you guys have a, you, do, you, do you make a three point sling? I don't have a concept of what that even means anymore. It never it's attached been, in three points. I don't know been, why it was. It's been so long since I've used one of those old school slings. I thought about making a four point sling. We'll just call it the strangler. The strangler? The strangler dangler. So are we going to war with Mexico or what are we doing? Is the Fed, has there been any shots fired? You mean, are we going to war with Texas? No, is Texas going to war with the federal government? Yeah, no, it's not going to happen. It's all bullshit. It's not. It's not bullshit. Why are they so focused on the park? What about all the rest of it? Because that's where Abbott is making his stand. So it's not. It's technically not bullshit. But you have this faraway government that's in Washington D.C. that is trying to execu- execute its authority in Texas. Texas has the home field advantage. <clears throat> And unfortunately for the faraway government, all those, you know, all those agents that are down there that are supposed to be enforcing that, whatever the rule is at the faraway government, they live in those fucking communities. And so a lot of those, uh, a lot of those agents are saying, fuck off. We're yeah, not, that's what I heard. And, yeah, and so what's going to happen when they try to, um, when the White House tries to take over the National Guard? You're going to have a, you, again, just like everything, you're going to have a percentage. If, if uh, you know, they send a four-star down there or whatever they're going to fucking do and say, hey, you guys are all activated and we're going to send you to fucking Madova for training. You're going to have a percentage that are going to. Nope, we're not going. No, you're going to have a percentage that are going to go. You're going to have a percentage of guys that will just go home. And then you're going to have a percentage of guys that will be like, fuck you. I'm going to stay right here. Does that mean Leavenworth? No, what it would mean is they would probably, because you're in a you're in a precarious position there. Say it, just fucking. Oh, no, what? I'm, I'm just I'm just like they're in a very precarious position in the sense of could could they take could they activate those national guard guys and then try and prosecute them for disobedience of a lawful order? The issue is they have the same problem. Those national guard guys are in the state of Texas. And unless Abbott is going to give them up 
to the federal government, then how are they going to prosecute them? Right? It's it's one of those things where you have this group of people in this country who believe that the laws do not apply to them, the Democrats, but then they want to execute the law against other people. If the laws don't apply equally across the board, then who cares if you know who cares if fucking General Boobaloo Fufu's like, well, we're going to court martial you for uh, disobedience of a lawful order. You first, you got to get him in. You got to get them in custody, mm -hmm. and then you have to have a trial. And I don't believe that even a because court martials, court martials are. They're hard to win. For, I mean, the, for, 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 a, for a certain extent. But for who? For, so in that particular instance, that would be hard for the government to win. Because, again, technically, they are currently underneath the Department of Transportation in, in Texas. And so they are actually following lawful orders. Who's under DOT? Uh, National Guard. National Guard guys, uh, I think. Activated under DOT yeah, and assigned to DOT? I believe that I believe there. I might I might be wrong on that. But either way, they're executing lawful orders under the command structure that they are currently in. The US Army can't really just be like, hey, we're activating you. Um, go home. They have to be like, hey, we're activating you. You're gonna go to I don't know, fucking Poland and help train Polish forces. Are those guys even in F in an MOS that they would help? I mean, wouldn't that, that'd be soft, well, wouldn't it, doing that shit? It's just to get them out of there. It just would be get them out of there. And then you would go after them for missing a movement, right? So they so missed the movement. Won't. They didn't go, yeah. That would be the bigger, that would be the bigger hit. But the problem is for the federal government, for, for the, you know, for the Department of Defense is those, you, you can't just, you can't just activate National Guard troops. You have to have a reason to activate National Guard troops, like, White House comes out all the time and they're like, this is how many National Guard, you know, this is how many National Guard troops can be activated during this period. And this is why they're being activated. You can't just, the Department of Defense can't just be like, hey, we're going to activate, you know, the the entire Texas National Guard and tell them they have to go hang out in California. They don't have the money to do it. They have to budget all that shit. <clears throat> Did you hear that they canceled uh, exports of natural gas from Texas? Biden, I saw Biden, I think it was yesterday, said, you know, this is a, it's a climate crisis. We're shutting off all natural gas exports going overseas. And apparently a lot of it was coming from Texas. So as a retaliatory move uh, on Abbott, they axed all that. Now, when they say that, I don't know if that's like starting next year or if it was immediate, but it, I took it as meaning, meaning immediately. I mean, the, thing about, the interesting thing about Texas versus Joe Biden <clears throat> is who cares? Right. Literally, if Joe Biden says, if he comes out like like this and says, we are we are no longer going to export natural gas. Joe Biden does not export any natural gas. He can't even shut Texas down. Texas is doing it. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. that that natural gas is coming out of Texas ground. That natural gas is going through Texas pipes. That natural gas is getting taken down to the port. Yeah, they'd have to put Texas an embargo port. on it. They'd Texas have to, port. They'd have to put the goddamn Navy out in the, yeah, in the they, Gulf and stop them. They'd have to board those barges. And they're not going to do that. They're, this is just, you know, bring. So what's it really about? Oh, it, it's really about the same thing that it was about the first time not allowing states to execute their own rights. So aren't the, all the other ports of entry, all, are, well, not ports of entry, but all the other gates are still fucking open, right? Don't we still have a fucking swarm hordes coming through the border, but where everything's focused on this fucking park right now? Isn't there a million other places they can just fucking come into the United States? Yes. Do you think they're, <laughs> so they're but, still but, coming you, in? But Abbott has the biggest problem. So Texas has the biggest you problem. You see San Diego, La Jolla? uh -huh. You didn't see that? No. Two, three days ago, fucking rubber rating boats, like like 10 meters, 11 meters, fucking hit the shore and fucking hordes of, hordes of them coming ashore right, right there at like, at the, um, at children's pool and shit. I mean, it is what it is. If, if you have a federal government that is not willing to enforce the law, then they're going to get in. I mean, they, they're opening gates, so... Abbott, but Ab, even that, Abbott still has the biggest problem. More people are coming across through Texas than anywhere else. 
He's doing his job to, he's doing his part to slow the invasion. Have you seen the red map? The question, yeah. It looks like the other red map. Kind of. But you, you have the same problem there, too, that we talked about before is, you know, unlike, unlike the first Civil War, where there were delineated lines, that structure is everywhere, right? It's, it's all across the country. So you don't get to just establish some line and say, those guys are bad guys, those guys are good well, guys. Well, I mean... Because it'll be everywhere. Luckily, the red part has a lot more fucking guns. And you can you can still connect those fucking little blue states and because we know those blue states aren't blue. There's a little fucking oh, yeah, pocket yeah. in there. A, you just fucking wall that motherfucker there's off. There's a pocket. Yeah, that's so it, it's it's not in their interest, but they also can't let you know it's not in the federal government's interest to allow and Texas the, to do all those blue doing. areas there. They don't grow no fucking food. It all comes from the fucking red area. Of course, yep. But they don't they don't care about that. They don't, you know, the, you have a, you have a growing, you have a growing wealthy liberal um, consortium that believes that there are too many people in the world. And if, you know, they, I, I guarantee you, if Bill Gates fantasizes about, you know, 53 million people dying in this country from starvation. Isn't that what the Georgia Guidestones were? Part of it. Yeah. But I mean, they, they fantasize about that shit. You have people in power right now. Unlike before, you have people in power right now that don't care if certain things fall apart if a bunch of people are killed in that. Meaning, you know, whether people starve to death because we're plowing all our crops under or they don't care because, first off, they don't think it will affect them, which is the, the ignorance and arrogance of that is unbelievable because all you have to do is watch any Austin Power movie and you know... <laughs> You know that minions, you have to have minions. And if you're starving your minions to death, your ship's not going to move. You're, I mean, we already have a fucking problem in the in the U.S. military of, of not having enough personnel. Well, there's a, Imagine it's, it's if, being fixed. Have you not heard? No, it's not going to fix it. Do you know what I'm talking about? They're going to enlist all the illegal immigrants? Mm-mm. What? You only have to have a 50 on the ASVAB now, and you don't have to have a, a diploma or even a GED any longer. And there's a, a waiver for weed. They're going to, uh, they're going to regret that very much. No of, different than of course they, they're going to regret no it. No different than they regretted it after Vietnam. So, do you think that move? Because somebody had pointed, I think it was Frisella I was listening to pointed out. He says, "Yeah, well, who, who coming in the country doesn't have a GED or a diploma? All your illegal aliens, right? So maybe that is a path to citizenship. Maybe that is maybe that is the thing. I don't have a problem with that. The fuck is that? Somebody getting out of town? Motorcycle." I, I don't have a problem with that. No, bring, I bring, no. bring you know if you bring bring them all in. The only issue is because they're immediate. Well, I mean, they're not going to stay here in the United States. the The only issue is you probably need to create a foreign legion, just because you're going to have language issues and stuff like that, and it's going to take time to spool those guys up. But whatever, I, I don't. It, that should be a path to citizenship. No, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, but th- I, they're not coming here to join the military. <laughs> What are they coming here for? They're coming here for the free benefits. How many are coming here to destroy infrastructure? Did you see the dude? None. You know who I'm talking about? You see the no. guy? Uh-uh. Middle Eastern dude comes through, and he's like, you don't know who I am? And I'm like, no, who the fuck are you? He said, you'll know who I am. So apparently, I don't know how, I'm sure it was handed to them on a platter. Uh, dude did six years in prison somewhere, Middle East, terrorist, um, Machine guns, explosives, destroying infrastructure, whole deal. And somehow he has ended up at our fucking border and is now loose in the United States. When they're coming across, so there's a bunch of people at airports right now. Um, Actually, somebody we know that was flying yesterday said, um, when you're going through, it's not customs, who, who is the, TSA. When you're going through TSA, if you are undocumented illegal, you can just go through, but they're still fucking checking your asshole and making you take your shoes off. And those people going through, they can, if they don't want their picture taken, they won't even take their picture. They'll just fucking let them board the airplane. Is what it is. Well, I mean, you, we are not going to do anything about it until... What's the detriment to that? What do you mean, what's the detriment? How can that be negative for us? How can that harm well, it, us? Well, it can be negative. It can be negative if any of that is true. You, doubt, be, you think it's not? Well, I don't know. 
it, but it can be negative from the perspective. If any of that is true, there are real people around the world that do want to hurt the United States. And so if that's true, why, you know, it's, it's easy to take another plane. It's easy to take over a fucking bus or whatever they want to do. Um, I just don't think it's, it's a, I don't think it's a realistic avenue. I don't think it's a realistic avenue to walk up from Central America, cross the border, and then think you're going to be fucking terrorist number one. Have you seen all the it Chinese guys with the fucking crew cuts and shit? Again, a million, a, a million soldiers cross into the United States armed to the teeth. Armed to the fucking teeth. A month? Six months? They're wiped out. Because they don't have any logistics. They don't have the capability to sustain themselves, period. And every motherfucker in the United States has 10 guns. Even the liberals that pretend that they don't have guns have guns. So they last a month, maybe, if they're lucky. Now, take, you know, take the fucking uh, um, World Trade Center. Which... We, we know was not fucking, it wasn't an airplane that dropped that motherfucker. Take the World Trade Center. Even that, right? Even, even the, even the, that happening. You mean the Israelis blowing it up? Even that happening was not, didn't, the United States didn't fucking skip a beat. The reality is all the craziness that we, no, all, all, we all, didn't all, all the United beat. States, gonna... all the United States got was more fucking tyrannical oversight over U.S. fucking citizens. Yeah, it didn't. We didn't skip a beat. That so, you know, you could again. It doesn't matter how many fucking terrorists come in from Syria or how many terrorists come in for. Could things get a little dicey? Yeah, things could get a little dicey, but we we ain't gonna see motherfuckers here. <laughs> Like, you know, the, the, uh, airplane ain't going to crash into city hall and shit. It, it could. So yes, if you live in a major metropolitan area and real terrorist cells are moving into the United States through the border, then things could get dicey. But even then, if you think about it, how many people live in New York city, right? Even the, even the loss of life that happened in the world trade center didn't touch New York city, right? It didn't, tu- it didn't touch New York city. So what I'm saying is most people don't, most people in the world don't understand how big the United States is, mm-hmm. how much infrastructure the United States has. Yes, there are, there are, there are specific infrastructure things that you could attack that would, that would create a nuisance, but you aren't, you're not shutting the America. You're not shutting America down. You're not slowing it down. You're not, there's nothing they can really fucking do from that level because this country is way too big has way too many rednecks it's just it's just not happening i don't you know i i would not want to be i would not want to be venezuelan and have a bunch of venezuelan army guys come across the border and start shooting up malls yeah i mean when 9 11 happened we had the we had the dudes that had the gas station here mm-hmm. and they were they were fucking on it like that they're like we are not we are not from there. We are Americans. <laughs> We're all about America. Yeah, you just so I don't, you know, I don't put a lot of, I don't put a lot of stock in that rhetoric because the the thing that has been happening and has been happening for almost two years is those people have been coming across the border, mm-hmm. and yet nothing has happened. They're just coming across the border. They're getting their fucking. They're getting their Obama cell phones. They're getting their fucking government checks. We are paying them to sit around and do nothing. So And and they can't get jobs. Why would you why would you fuck that up? They can't yeah, they can't get it. Why would you fuck that up when you just spent all that time getting over here? So I'm not I'm not too worried about things that are coming across the southern border. Really. What are you worried about? What's a what's more what's a should be a more real concern? The November election. That's not gonna happen? Well, I don't know if that's not going to happen, but what happens on the elec- on the election is probably more pivotal for the world than uh, than anything else. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? The same person that won last time, Donald Trump. 
But they, are they going to announce that? I don't know. That's the question. Or are they going to say Mike Obama won? That's the question. Are they going to... You see them starting to roll the fucking Obama shit out, right? Yeah. The The issue there is uh, the Gavin Newsom, Michelle Obama ticket. It's not. I don't think it's going to be Gavin. <coughs> oh, it, it's Gavin who they want, not Michelle. People don't like Michelle. That's the truth is people don't like Michelle. And unfortunately for the Democrats, people don't like Gavin Newsom either. He's a fucking asshole. So I'm not concerned with who they roll out because the, they've already ruined their party by not having debates, right? They would be better off if they were just like, hey, uh, JFK, you got it. They really would be better off to throw JFK on the ticket because he speaks to both sides, right? So he could be the guy that, that he could be the guy that that gets Trump voters to vote more centrist, right? But they're not going to do that because they don't want to lose power. Do you see JFK Brandel? Do you see JFK out there bench pressing? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. He got every Jim Shark kids fucking vote. He got he got all the Jim rats. Well, it's just that would be better for the Democratic Party. But since they've said there's going to be no debates, that Biden is the guy. Nobody believes that Biden is the guy. They're gonna they're gonna hold their convention, and on their convention they are going to announce their real intentions, which is not going to be Joe Biden or Camilla. They're gonna they're gonna bring in. I think it'll be Michelle and Gavin Newsom. Why'd Amy, Co- uh, Amy ACB or whatever, Amy Comey Barrett or whatever, yeah. why'd she vote in favor of the of them? I th- I th- wasn't she the pivotal fucking vote where the feds could roll into Texas and take down that barbed wire? Maybe. I don't know. You don't know about it? Yeah, I don't know about it. All right, I got pee. Okay, we're back. Are we live? So did you see your boy uh, whistling diesel? I had no. What'd he do? You don't know? No, what? Mm. Drove a tank through his house? No, he bought he bought a Komatsu, the same one that Killdozer is. Oh, and he's going to Killdozer it? And so they're they're actually super difficult to come in, in possession of, I guess. Yeah. There's not a lot of them. 60-year-old tractor. Uh, he was going to buy one. They located one in Australia, and then they ended up finding one in Idaho or Montana. So they go there and actually buy it. They, they meet this old dude. And he's like, he knew exactly what the fuck was going on. He knew all about it. Gave him all the publications and shit. And uh, it, it, they had put it up in the mountain <clears throat> on this guy. He's got, he's got a giant quarry. And uh, it's snow and shit frozen in. And they can't get this thing to start. And they light fires under it to warm up to warm up the engine and shit. So they get it started, finally get it down. And they're going to um, transport it to his place in Tennessee. And then when they get there, it's it's overweight. They got to take the rippers off. They got to fucking take the blade off of this thing. And he takes it 1,400 miles out of the way and goes to the town in Colorado. Rolls into the town in Colorado and starts interviewing people. And everybody's like, Killdozer's a hero. Like, even he he goes into the the some public, public office there and meets this lady. And she's like, so do you know about Killdozer? She's like, Oh yeah, I was the dispatcher that took the initial call <laughs> when he was when he was running through there. And then he meets uh there everywhere he goes, like right as they're rolling into the outskirts of town, there's a gas station, they stop and he's got the Killdozer book. Every, they're selling this fucking book everywhere. So he meets this cop who was like the the head SWAT cop that showed up for this. That's the author of the book, is my understanding. He meets another dude who's a, a cop and he's like, Well, yeah, you know he's the bad guy, right? And then the, and the cop goes, and then in the next sentence, he's like, but from a libertarian perspective, I can understand why he did what he did. So he meets up with some head of the township, and they're like, okay, you're coming through with the a bulldozer. Is Does it look like Killdozer? He's like, no, no, it's not up armored yet. And they yeah. go, you're not unloading it, right? And he goes, no, no, we're not going to take it off the trailer. And the other guy goes, well, they couldn't take it off the trailer anyways. He goes, oh, yes, you could. you can legally drive tracked equipment on the shoulder that's still the the laws in this this town or whatever so it was pretty cool man he made uh two videos i think there's a third one out he has actually bought this thing has possession of it and is taking it to fucking home to ten is currently home in tennessee right now mm. which i find interesting i wonder where the kill because he's is. he's still in oh they have it in some somebody i don't i don't know who has it somebody somebody purchased it um but that's interesting because of the nonsense that happened over the, the fucking jet, jet ski skis? shit. Yeah. 
You know, somebody's got to be, it's in the back of fucking everybody's head right now. I don't know. He seems like a smart character, but we, we it's, of course, you're going to get a warm reception for Killdozer because, again, we romanticize as Americans. The underdog? Not just the underdog, but he went after the government. And even the people in government hate government. So, so you know, you give it you give it a couple of years, and everybody's going to be like, "Yeah, that, he was a fucking hero for doing that shit, right?" That's because we hate government. That's why everybody votes for the fucking rebellion, even though we are the empire, right? Can we you are. look up, type in Kildozer, look that up, see what Komatsu that is, and then do a search for sale and see what those go for. Um, yeah, we are the you know everybody we Americans. Wave the flag of rebellion, but we are the empire, right? We are the, the we are the force that moves throughout the galaxy of this planet and decides who wins and who loses. Even though we even though we pretend we're the rebels, you know, <laughs> we are really the empire. Even the Iraqis loved Star Wars, and they couldn't understand why we liked it because we were the empire, right? So or we are the empire. Iran is Iran much on par uh, from a fighting perspective? As is it the same as fighting I- Iraq? Oh yeah, it'd be the same as fighting Iraq. It'd be a it'd be weak sauce. Really? Yeah, it'd be weak sauce. They don't have any range. Oh shit! Reach. They don't have anything. What about the missiles that just hit this navy ship? I mean, honestly, or was it? Is it even a navy ship, or was it just a U.S. flagged ship? Of so some a U.S. Sort? flagged ship. Honestly, the the interesting thing. The interesting thing that's coming out of that, okay? The interesting thing that's coming out of that has nothing to do with the U.S. Navy and everything to do with the Houthis. The interesting thing that's coming out of that is if you want to be a power in the in the world, you have to spend tons of your GDP on a navy. the The navy controls the navy controls the shipping lanes. Whether that was the British back in the day when they controlled half the world, or the United States now that we control half the world. You have to spend tons and tons of money on naval vessels. And if you wanted to do a Navy blockade, a naval blockade, you had to have those vessels and be able to put them in a position where they could block whatever. But then you also had to have the capability to fight other navies that would try and break the blockade. Very expensive. The Houthis, in effect, have created a naval blockade over there where ship shipments are actually going other ways around the world, which is taking them longer to get to their positions, blah, blah, blah. And they're doing it with low-end technology. So for the first time, we have a we have a country that is really not even a country, right? The, the Houthis don't have a real country. Yemen is a shithole. You have a third world country creating a naval blockade that affects the entire world. And we have not figured out how to deal with that effectively right yes we have a destroyer and it's shooting down most of the drones and stuff like that but people aren't taking a chance going through there they're going around they're going a long way so the naval blockade is in effect why aren't we just bombing the shit out of somewhere because for the last six years seven years we have been bombing the shit out of somewhere the saudis the saudis have been bombing the shit out of yemen and to no effect Right, we're talking about we're talking about uh, low tech items that are easily moved around and hard to find. Right, it's not like, you know, it's not like a regular war where you're hunting down tanks and shooting tanks. You're, we're talking about drones. Dudes are throwing them off their roof, <laughs> and then what do you do? It's because it's so low tech, and it's also because the government of Yemen has been decimated. There's not any real targets. Like it's, it's easy to, you know, it's easy to attack a Russian airfield, right? Because it's a strategic location that we know about. We can see those aircraft. We can attack that. But when you're talking about guerrilla warfare, you're talking about fighters that are decimated, that are uh, disseminated throughout the land. And I am sure that there's not really any central command for those Houthis. I think that, you know, when Brando gets his, his missile, he's just like, Let's fire, fire that bitch. And he fires his missile, right? And then when you get yours, you're like, we got to fire two because Brandle fired one, right? It, it's it's so decentralized that it's very hard for us to do anything. 
What's because we don't we won't because we don't want to commit. We don't want to commit. We could commit and we could stop the Houthis from fire, from ever firing again. How long but we don't want to commit. Four hours. Uh, about a couple yeah, I bet a week. A week of uh What's the repercussion of, of that? week of B fifty twos flying out <laughs> from Okinawa and, and carpet bombing that country into the Stone Age, which is already is the Stone Age, but again, we we have lost the we have lost the taste we have lost the taste for the win. What's the repercussion of it? The repercussion of it? Nothing. Nobody gives a shit about what's going on in Yemen. That country's been at war for years. Nobody cares. So again, we could carpet bomb Yemen. It probably wouldn't. Well, I mean, it it would. It would make the news eventually, but it wouldn't be big news because, I mean, Obama drone strike the fucking wedding in Yemen. Killed a U.S. citizen. What? How much is the Komatsu? Um, an early to mid '80s model you can get for ten thousand. The big and, one. The yeah. big one. Yep. The D three three five A. It costs more than ten thousand dollars to well, move it. Yeah, and now the mid two thousands model is a hundred thousand dollars. You can buy a tank for a hundred grand. Yep. You really it's should be looking. Look what? at Which look at the uh, hey, wait a minute. Look up Israeli dozer. You should be able to buy that dozer already kitted out. <laughs> What's going on in Israel? That's not over with yet? No, no, no. they the goal is to push the Palestinians into the ocean. Somebody said they want to cut a channel through there. I don't know. Who who knows? Who knows? For shipping lane or something. That's what this is really all about. No, 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 no. This that's not. It's not. It's not about. Yeah. Can you buy that? I don't know. I it mean says, that that uh, screen capture it and just look, search for sale. IDF Caterpillar D nine. They oh, no 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 no. The Komatsu, This Komatsu is way bigger than a D nine. Hey, you you want the D nine? You should. They they're using they're using the they're using those tractors in front. Of the tanks. Have you seen the? Have you seen all the SWAT teams have the the Bobcats? Oh yeah, yeah. The skid steers that are all armored out. Yep. Have the battering ram and shit on them. Did you see the guy go nuts the other day with the with the skid steer tipping over cars and shit? Yeah. The cop the cop showed up and he was ramming it with yeah. the fucking skid steer. Did I get shot? I'm sure he got shot. I'd have liked to have heard the conversation leading up. To no, it, he though. didn't. Assault with a deadly weapon, so they could have that cop could have shot him. I I just saw up to the point where the cop got out of the car and started going around with it. So I'm like, oh, he probably blasted that fool. So is the U.S. going to strike Iran? No, we're not going to strike Iran. So how did we happen? We ran. The, what, what's up with the the three U.S. servicemen that got killed? All from Georgia, all some black folks. Yeah, National Guard, unfortunately. Fortunately for those guys, they were activated. They weren't uh, so two, that two women and a guy. Yeah, that, that tower where they're where they're at tower, I think it's tower twenty three or whatever. That's the jumping off point for U.S. forces going into Syria, and so that is a hot that is a hot target, but it's not a hot target, right? It's 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 rel- the place where they're at is relatively safe. Um, the the guys are just you know again warfare uh, war is always about figuring out what other people's weaknesses are and how you do it. And they just followed one of our drones in. So Biden said, uh, you will pay the price um, at a time of our choosing. That was a fucking weird thing to say. Yeah, they're going to blow, they'll, they'll blow up a fucking milk cart or a goddamn, uh, you know, baby factory somewhere in Syria. They're not going to touch Iran. They're, they're not going to touch Iran. Even though they, I, I feel like they want to get into war with Iran, but they're not going to touch Iran. So it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be weak sauce, whatever it is that they respond with, because it's just going to be weak. That bulldozer alone without the armor and everything is $1 million. Mm. Mm. But I, I bet once this Gaza thing is over, we'll be able to get them cheap on the cheap on the down low. On Marketplace? On Marketplace. Yeah, Marketplace, uh, Marketplace Israel. Because they'll get... have tainted blood on them? Why? <laughs> <laughs> just because they'll be done with them, right? Once they bulldoze that place into the ocean, they won't need them anymore. The, the the only reason why they have those up armors is uh, those up armored dozers is because of the Palestinians. I see you shot some video with um, Grantham. Did I? I didn't shoot any video with Grantham. There's a video out there of you and Grantham. What are we doing? In one grand stuff. Really? I didn't even see it. What? I didn't see it. Yeah. I didn't see it. I think he's just. I think. 
uh, AI is just taking just my likeness it. and just generating it. Just generating that shit. Got it. Yeah, just generating that. So, well, I see you have a. Uh, I see you have some new employees out there. We do. We have some some actually good employees. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. How many did you get? Uh, Seventeen. Really? But there's only two here. Oh, okay. I mean, that's how it always is. <laughs> Fucking three walk in. We had a we had a girl show up, and she walked in. I'm like, "What's wrong with you?" And she just sits like. <laughs> like didn't say shit. I'm like, can you hear me? So she was here about five minutes when they got her on a sewing machine. Can she sew? Uh, no, oh, no, no. Okay. That's she, too bad. She, she she could have been the best sewer in the world, and she wouldn't have fucking made it. Um, and within minutes, I hear, man, she's got a shitty attitude, and I mm. like, and it's coming from somebody that never says that. So they show her how to sew. Like this makes it go, and. This is hold your Do you hand think here. wait though? Do you think that when somebody shows up like that, that they're here because they've been forced to be here? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So she had uh was working at a place. I go, where were you working at? Oh, out at so and so. I had how was that? Oh, it's fucking horrible, so incompetent. Just everybody there's just a piece of shit. And I'm like, mm, mm. you're gonna be saying that about me next week. Yep. And uh they showed her so and she sewed two lines. Like, no, I so I watched it happen. She sews two lines. And the shop goes quiet. And I'm like, that's weird. You know how weird it is when the shop goes quiet. quiet. You really notice it. And everybody in the building's looking at her. And she's just sitting there looking at these two lines of stitching. And finally, like, minutes go by. And they're like, hey, so, so, are you good? What, what's up? And she la- she's like, you didn't give me enough instruction. I'm like, holy shit, it's like a real one. Like, I've seen this on videos before, but I've never actually seen, seen it, it in real life. In real life. And I'm like, uh, I'll bet there's a fucking Prius out there. I'm surprised. Like, she was definitely wearing a mask before she came in, probably. Like, just not not going to jive, right? So she disappears at 9.30, breaks at 10. I'm like, where's this bitch at? And then I see women start to go to the bathroom. I'm like, something's happened. Like, she's committed suicide. Something has happened, right? And they come out with her. They get her out of the bathroom somehow. And, and I hear, you don't have to cry. You just not you can't work here. <laughs> and they so she So she, the ladies took care of it. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah, the ladies took care That's of it. That's nice when the ladies take care of yeah. it. You don't have to work here, but Yeah. You don't you don't, you don't have, to, have to go home, but you have to fucking leave here. Yeah. That's nice. But That's no, nice. we have we have a, a few good performers for sure. Good. Yeah. That's good. What are we making right now? A fucking everything, man. We got NSW modulars cut chest rigs we've got full blown with the the saw boxes out there cut with the nsws um man we got mini packs we've got day packs cut i've got four or five batches of micro rigs cut we just got pallets of cordura finally showed up um we got i'll I'll bet we got work cut that they're not going to touch for 90 days right now yeah that's always good yeah the guys are on it the girls are on it fucking always good game changer it's always good yep no supply problem Oh, yeah, there's always supply problems. Well, you said you just got material. Did you get everything you wanted? No. No, we got got a lot. And then I I fired an email this morning. She got back a couple things that weren't there or are there all of a sudden, um, which is good. So that's come out of finishing or whatever. But, like, the main company that we've bought material, like, webbing and shit from for the last 30 years, out of business. Closed down. But they were a a middleman, right? Mm -hmm. Did you find the? Nope. Uh, I mean, we have them replaced. We always hmm. knew. Yeah. Yeah, we've got lines. we got samples coming in from fucking 12 different places right now. That's good. Yeah. What else? I don't have anything exciting to talk about. All right, well, fuck it then. Let's go, uh, let's go eat lunch. Okay, let's go eat lunch. Built the thing from the bottom, they tore it down, I rebuilt it, I get-